Hello, my name is Danny Haudegui, Associate Professor of Art at Whittier College. In this second video, I'll show you how to design the digital worksheet using Moodle's questionnaire tool, and I'll also show you some examples of higher order thinking questions that you can use with your students. The first step in adding a digital worksheet is to enter your Moodle classroom. You'll then want to turn editing on. This will give you the options to add the Moodle questionnaire tool. You'll next want to scroll down to the weekly module in which you want your digital reading worksheet to appear. Once there, you'll go to add an activity or resource. This will pop up an option window with several choices on the left hand side. From here, you'll want to scroll down and find questionnaire. Click that and add. From here, Moodle gives you some options for the digital reading worksheet. The first one is the name. I like to give the name a descriptive title that is linked to the reading. Under the name menu, type in a title. Moodle also gives you the option for a description, but that's completely optional. Next, you'll have another, a couple of series of options here. We'll only look at a few of them. The first one is timing. Timing is set so that you can set an opening and closing date, which means that the students will not be able to enter information either before or after the closing date if you choose to set them. You do not have to set them, but if you do, all you do is hit the radio buttons and it gives you the options for dates and times that the worksheet will open or close. Next, you'll have the response options. Here you have a series of different options that will dictate how the worksheet will work. The first one is type, and this will give you options for how many times the student will be able to respond. They can respond to many, they can respond once, they can respond daily, weekly, monthly. I like to set it to respond once so that the student can only respond one time. Respondent type is where you set the uh, anonymous so that student responses are not viewable by other students. The next option is the save resume answers. This allows students to save their answers while they're working on it. I like to leave allow branching questions off. Auto number pages do not number question or pages. And the last option is a submission grade. This, is, this gives you the option to give a student a grade if they submit the completed assignment. The next option is content options, and by default, it's set to create new. This gives you the option to use an already existing questionnaire's format, but since we're creating this from scratch, we'll, use, we'll just leave it at create new. The last three options are common module settings, restrict access, and activity completion. For these three, you'll wanna make sure that you're using the same settings that you use in your other pa Moodle pages so that the settings are consistent. Next, you'll go to save and display. Once you hit submit, Moodle takes you to the question page. And as you can see, our questionnaire does not contain any questions, so we need to add some questions. Go ahead and click add questions. From here, Moodle gives you a drop-down menu with different types of questions that you can add. We're gonna add an essay box, as this is going to be the most common type of question that you'll use. An essay box is simply a question that allows students to type in text. The first question that I like to add on my questionnaire is a thesis question, asking the students to summarize the thesis. The first thing you're, want, you're going to want to do is add a name for the question. I'm going to title this thesis. This question name only shows up if you export this questionnaire. So it's just a way of keeping track of your questions. The following option is responses required. I click yes. Input box size, I go to 10. This is just the, the size of the box that allows students to enter text. Next, you type in the question text. Please summarize the author's thesis and hit save changes. As you can see, now we have our first question here. 
Now that we've added our first question, we'll add our second question, which is a checkbox question. Once again, go to your drop down menu and go to check boxes. With this type of question, students are allowed to create a list of words or terms and are then asked to rank them in order of importance. As in our previous question, we'll want to add a question name. One of the first lists I ask students to create is a hashtag list. So let's enter in hashtag. Responses required, yes. Minimum force responses is one, max force responses is one. And here I add the question text. For the hashtag question, I ask students to hashtag the reading and rank the hashtags in order of importance. The hashtag question is a good way of having the students synthesize the information and distill it into a concise hashtag. You'll first want to enter the text of the question. Once we do that, we have to customize this checkbox question because we're using it in a bit of an unorthodox way. Normally, the checkbox question has radio buttons with predetermined text inside of it. Here, we want the students to add the text, so we have to do a bit of a hack. What we'll do is add code under the possible answers question that will allow students to enter their own text into the list. The code is exclamation point other equals the title of the question. So in this case, it would be hashtag number one. We'll want to do this for every single space that we want students to add text in. Using this code allows us to customize the checkbox list, but for every new list, you'll have to change the title. This list is a hashtag list. So after the equal sign, I added the word hashtag. If I was doing a vocabulary list, I would add the word vocabulary word after the equal sign. Once you've finished adding all the fields, hit Save Changes. Now that we've added two questions, let's look at the preview. As you can see, the first question here, please summarize the author's thesis, gives the students a blank text field for them to enter in their text. For the second question, we added specific fields that then allow the students to enter in their own text. Here, the hashtag question will ask the students to rank them in order of importance. So they would add the most important hashtag in field number one and so forth. Now that you know how to add questions, I can show you a preview of my digital worksheet that I use for my art theory seminar. Here you can see the text boxes that allow students to enter in their own text. One question that I like to use is asking students to add three topic sentences from the reading that are used by the author as support of her or his thesis. This ensures that the students are doing critical reading and are looking for evidence in the text. Here is another example of the customized list checklist here I've added the word artist in which I ask the students to write down which artists were named in the text and add them in order of importance. In this question, I ask students to write down the 10 most important vocabulary words from the text and add them in order of importance. I then ask them to define the five most important vocabulary words from the list above. Once you're happy with your critical reading worksheet, all you have to do is exit this module and return back to the home page. Once you build your worksheet, it's time for students to add data from the reading. In the next video, I'll show you what to do with that data by importing it to Tagzito, a word cloud visualization. These word clouds are then used during class to foster student-centered discussion.